Hi, welcome to the EEG lab. In this video, we're going to show you how to set up a participant for an EEG experiment. We're going to try to show you all the steps that you will need to follow very closely in order to collect high quality EEG data. So please watch carefully um, and uh, enjoy the video. Okay, let's talk about what you need to do before the participant arrives. You need to prepare things about 10 to 15 minutes in advance of the participant coming to the lab so that you're ready to set them up once they do get here. Um, let's go through each item one by one. One of the first things that you need to do is get the gel ready that you're going to put into each electrode slot on the participant's head. We'll do that a little bit later. We'll show you how to do that, but let's get prepared for that. We usually fill syringes with gel. Um, the syringes are, will be somewhere in your laboratory, usually boxed up like this. Um, so you should take two of these syringes out, especially if you have a partner, um, because you may want to share doing the, um, uh, putting the gel into the participant's cap. Um, there are two different types of gel, and it's important, important to make sure that you get the right one for the experiment that you're doing. Right now, I'm going to talk to you about the ACTICAP uh, electrode set. So if you're doing an ACTICAP experiment, you need the gel with the green cap. Okay? When you open it, you'll notice that it looks like what I call alien blood. Um, of course, it's not. Um, but this green gel is the one that you need to use for the ACTICAP type of experiments. Your lab may also have um, gel with a white lid or a gray lid. Um, this looks a little bit different inside. You should never use this type of gel with the ACTICAP system, but we'll talk a little bit later about other systems which you may use this gel for. Once you identify the type of gel that you need to use for your experiment, you should then go forward to fill syringes with it. This can get a bit messy, so it's good to have paper towels or other types of towels nearby so that you can clean yourself up. So I'll get some of those right now. Um, some of the easiest ways to do this is to put the um, uh, syringe down into the gel and suck the gel up inside so that you fill the syringe. So I've added a little bit more gel to the syringe. I'm going to wipe off the gel so that I don't waste a lot of it, and then wipe down the outside of uh, the syringe. Once I've done that, I can identify some needles that I have. So usually these will be in a box somewhere. Um, and you can uh, simply open the, the needle and then attach it to uh, the top of the syringe. Now, it's good, important to note that this is not a sharp needle. The tip is blunt, so you shouldn't uh, get injured by it. You don't want to let anyone fall on it though because they could, uh, it could puncture them. Uh, so just be careful with it, especially around people's eyes. Once you screw this onto the top of the syringe, you're ready. Um, you should do that again, like I said before, for two syringes so that you can either share with your partner um, or uh, you may need more gel than one syringe alone can hold. Okay, so once we've set up uh, the syringes, we need to also get out a few other items. You will need some of these uh, electrode rings. We'll use this to attach some of the electrodes to the participant's face. You should find some alcohol prep pads. Um, we'll use these to prepare the skin on the face for um, where we'll put electrodes on the face. Usually it's good to find a few wooden sticks. I'll show you what we use these for later on. You'll also want a measuring tape. Um, we're going to use this to measure the participant's head to find out what uh, size cap will fit on their head. And we'll also need um, what is called a chest strap. This will go around the participant's body to hold the cap onto them. And some of these straps to attach uh, the cap and the chest strap. And we'll show you later how to set this up. Some people use a chin strap, um, which I'll show you uh, later on in the video. So if you are using a chin strap to at attach your cap, you won't need the chest strap. And the final thing that you'll need is um, your own selection of electrode caps. This is the ACTICAP that I talked about earlier. So if you're using the ACTICAP, it will look like this. If you're not using ACTICAP, um, we'll show you what the other caps look like at another point in the video. Um, there are different sizes of uh, caps available. So you should look uh, inside the cap uh, to identify uh, the exact size of it. Um, and I'll show you later how to select the appropriate size cap. But there should be several of these um, around the lab. So these are the things that you need to set up in advance of your participant um, arriving. Um, just make sure that again, that you do this 10 to 15 minutes in advance of the participant showing up. 
You should have some sets of electrodes in your laboratory. Usually they're hanging on the wall. This set of electrodes is what we call an ACTICAP set of electrodes. So if you're using the ACTICAP system, they should look something like this. The ACTICAP electrodes will have a connecting wire. This will connect to your head box, which receives the signals and takes them to the recording computer. We'll also have a black box like this. And out of the black box will come individual electrode cables. These little things on the end are the electrodes. So these will sit on the head and record the brain waves from the head. Be careful with the black box. This black box should never have any contact with water as it could damage the electrodes that you're using. Usually you'll have two sets of uh, electrodes, uh, set one in this case uh, and set two. They'll go in different positions in the head and we'll talk about another point how to do that. You'll also have usually a ground and reference electrode. In this particular set there are separate set of electrodes. Sometimes they're within one of these boxes. In this case the ground and reference electrodes are blue and black in color, and you'll connect them also to the head box for the ACTICAP system. Again, it's important to identify which exact set of electrodes you'll be using in your experiment. This setup is what the ACTICAP system looks like. In your lab, you should have a set of amplifiers that you will need to use to record the brain signals. In this case, this is the brain amp series of amplifiers. You'll need to identify with your project leader or supervisor which system you're going to be using. Let me talk about this system. There are three components here. The bottom two sections here are amplifiers. They have cables going into them which carry the brain signals into them. Each one of them carries 32 channels from the head. The top part is a rechargeable battery which is used to power the amplifiers. And this box over here is what's called the head box. The electrodes uh, with their cables will plug into the different sections of this and transform the signals and send them to the amplifiers. These amplifiers, um, after they receive the signals, will then send the signals onto the recording computer so that they can be digitized and recorded for later processing. The brain amp amplifiers have a few important elements on the back, which I'm going to show you now. <clears throat> so let's turn them around. The bottom two elements are the amplifiers, which receive uh, and digitize the incoming EEG signals. And the top part is the battery. The battery will supply power to the two amplifiers. And before you start recording, you need to make sure that the amplifiers are switched on. There's a little switch here, which can go from off to on to ensure that your amplifiers are on. You also need to make sure that each amplifier is connected to the power output from the battery. These two uh, ports up here supply power out of the battery and then supply power into each of the amplifiers. You can pull the cables out and put them back in just like this. Okay. This cable here is the cable that actually takes the signals from the amplifier into the recording computer in the other room. These ca cables are very fragile. They're fiber optic, which means they're made of glass. So please don't bend them or twist them as you may break them. And this would make you unable to record your signals. Here we are in the control room. Your control room may look a little bit different from this, but usually there will be two computers in the control room. One of them, in this case on the left-hand side, will be used to present the stimuli for the experiment to the participant. So this particular computer is ready to start the experiment now. There will also be a separate computer and that computer is to record and visualize the EEG data that's coming in from the participants. Before you begin, you should identify which computer is which. Usually they'll be labeled. So in this case, over here, we have one labeled the stimulus PC. That's the one that controls your experiment. And the other one is labeled EEG acquisition. That's the one that records the data, the EEG data coming in from the participant, participant's head. Again, identify which one is which before you start the experiment. In your control room, you have one of the computers that will record the EEG data coming in from the participant's head. An important component of the system is the USB adapter. This adapter receives, via the fiber optic cables, data coming from the amplifiers in the other room. It then combines it with signals coming from the stimulus computer and sends them via USB cable 
to the recording computer. This is a critical component uh, to the system, and if something's wrong with it, you may not be able to record data. So this is a place to check to make sure that all the connections are correct before you begin your experiment. We're ready to set up the participant. We're back in the EEG lab, and what we now need to do is we need to select a cap to go on the participant's head. The EEG caps look like this, and they should be hanging somewhere on the wall or somewhere in drawers within your EEG lab. A critical first step is to select a cap of the appropriate size. There's usually a size tag inside of the cap, and it's measured in centimeters. First, we need to measure the participant's head to figure out what the circumference of their head is. This is where you need your measuring tape. Using the centimeter side, you should take the measuring tape around the largest uh, circumference of the participant's head. I'm measuring our participant Lisa's head as about 53 centimeters around. This means that I want to select a cap which is a close, fairly close in size to 53 centimeters. This is the one I've selected. Usually you don't want to select a cap that's too big, um, otherwise it may be loose and bulge out in certain places on the head. That would be an indication that the cap you're using is too big. If that's the case, try a smaller cap to make sure it lies flat across the head. To position the cap on the head, you need to open it up. And I usually put it down like this and ask the participant if they will hold the front of the cap on their forehead. Thank you. And then I pull it back over the head like this. As you can see, the cap fits fairly tightly against the head and is fairly flat when I pull down on these straps. Okay. What I need to do now is I need to make a few more measurements to position the cap appropriately. There's a critical position point that I want to have right in the middle um, between two points on the head. This is usually labeled number electrode number 14 on most active caps, but the electrode name is CZ. You may need to use a diagram of your electrode cap to figure out which electrode number is CZ. I want that electrode to sit equidistant between the two ears and between two points on the head in this direction. One is the nasian, this is the deepest point at the top of the nose, and the other is the inion on the back of the head. You may be less familiar with the inion, but it's sort of, if you put your finger at the back of the head, it's that little point where it's your skull sort of uh, turns under. You need to use your measuring tape for this to measure the distance between the inion, once you identify it, and the nasian. Be careful with your participant's eyes. This distance for Lisa is about 35 centimeters. So what I want is I want that electrode CZ to be right in the middle between those two positions. So if it's 35 centimeters between those two distance, between those two points, then I want the electrode CZ to be at about 17.5 centimeters. And that's where it is. To get the cap lined up in this direction, I want to measure between the two points on the ear that are called the tragus. This is this little point that sticks out here. That distance for Lisa is about 34 centimeters. So CZ should be at about 17 centimeters here, right in the middle, and it is. So we've got a well-positioned cap in this case, and all we need to do now is secure the cap. To secure the cap, I'm going to use a chest strap because I think this is the best way to keep the cap uh, stable. I'll show you that in a minute. But one way that people do this is that they use a chin strap. This is really easy because it's already part of the cap and you can simply Velcro it under the person's chin. Again, making sure that the cap is still flat and you don't move it much. If you feel like by securing the chest strap you've moved the cap around, you should remeasure and make sure the position is correct. If you want to use the chest strap, I'll show you on myself first. You simply put the chest strap around yourself and make sure that these little buttons are in front. You'll then need to secure these attachments to the cap using these little points here. 
and then you'll pull them down and attach them to the chest strap. Let's do this for Lisa. I usually ask the participant to secure this around themselves. Lisa, can you lift up your arms? And can you Velcro that together? And can you position these right in the middle of your chest, the little buttons? Great. So I'm gonna ask Lisa to pull this, cross this over her uh, neck and attach to that point over there. Just button it in. I'm going to again put the other attachment through here, button it closed and ask her to cross it over and snap it into the chest strap. What this does is this holds the cap down firmly on the participant's head so that it doesn't move much during the experiment. And that's critical so that each electrode keeps recording from the same location throughout the experiment. I'm gonna be a bit paranoid and I'm just gonna check the position again. Remember, this is science, so we're trying to do things accurately and precisely. So I find the inion again, I measure to the nasian, it's 35 centimeters, and my CZ electrode, number 14 in this case, is about halfway between those two, and that's exactly where I want it. If not, I may move the cap around just a little bit to make it right in the middle. I'll also measure again between the two traguses. That's 34 centimeters again, and I've got the position at 17 centimeters for CZ, so that seems right. So we've now got a cap that's appropriately positioned on the head and we've selected the appropriate cap size. We're going to start setting up the electrodes soon, but first you should familiarize yourself with the basic layout of the electrodes on the head. Somewhere in your lab there should be a sheet that looks something like this, which indicates the positions of all of the electrodes across the head and the labels of each electrode. So for instance, CZ is right in the middle of the top of the head. You'll also notice numbers on this form. And this corresponds to the exact channel number that each of these electrodes needs to go into. So each electrode will have a small number on it and it needs to go into the appropriately numbered slot on the head. You'll also notice that there are both green and yellow slots on the head. This appears on the cap as well. The different ports are, lab are colored green or yellow. This is because the two different sets of electrodes go into different colored ports. This is set two, and if I look at my uh, guide, it will tell me that set two channels go into the yellow holders, whereas set one go into the green holders. If you're unsure which way to set these up, you should talk to your supervisor about the correct way to do it. You'll also notice that there's a blue and a black one. These are going to be the ground and reference electrodes that go into those slots. We're ready to start attaching the electrodes to the cap. I'm going to start with these two critical electrodes, the ground, which is the black one, and the reference, which is the blue one. It's pretty easy to figure out where they need to go, just they're color-coded. I'm going to insert these into the cap by pushing them down in. You need to make sure that the electrode goes the whole way down into the port. You don't want the wires hanging down over someone's face during the experiment. So I usually try to orient the electrodes so that the wires are coming back. So let's start putting some of the electrodes into their electrode ports on the head. I'm going to start with electrode set number one for the ACTACAP system. What I need to do is I need to identify uh, the electrodes, each of which is numbered with a small number, and I need to put them into the appropriate slots on the head. First thing to do is to keep things organized, I'm going to clip the black box to the participant's shirt, as long as they're okay with that. Is that okay? Yes. Great. And then I'm going to identify um, out of the electrode set my uh, first numbered electrodes. I'm going to start with number one, two, three, four. Now the electrodes actually are organized, sometimes they get tangled up, but they're organized into groups. So one batch coming off over here has uh, eight different electrodes. That segments down into group, two groups of four, um, and you can separate them out. There's no perfect way of doing this, but I just jiggle them about, and they seem to come apart into two groups of four. 
And now I try to find out which ones are one through four. Oops, that's not those. These are the ones, okay? So I can see the little number on here indicating that this is number one, okay? Occasionally, those little numbers fall off. So sometimes you'll have to leave that one till the end and by process of elimination, figure out which number it is. But these seem to all be labeled. Usually they should be. This is number one. I know this is set number one, and I know that that means they go into the green slots. So I'm going to find the green slot labeled one and simply put number one into there. Again, make sure I push it down until it goes the entire way down against the rubber ring. I don't want any sort of gap between them. Okay, I push it down so it's the whole way in there. I go to number two. Next, I do the same thing. This is slot number two, green. I push it down against to make sure it's the whole way in. And then I need to find the slot for three and four. Now, three and four in this case, uh, for the green slots, are, not, are in the third row of electrodes. Notice these are all yellow in the second row. So I need to go back here, and I find that the green one on this far side is the number three. I push that in. And I just keep doing this. This is number four. The whole way back and forth across the head. Next, I have five, six, seven, and eight. And I'll just keep going through them until I've filled them all in order. I advise that you do things in a very orderly fashion like this. It makes the supports easier to find and a much faster process. So I've now done the green slots for set one, one through seven. So I've got the electrodes into the cap now uh, for set number one. And what I need to do is I need to connect the output from the black box into the head box, which will eventually take the signals into the computer. Remember that the Electrodes for set one went into the green ports. And so that means that this connector needs to go into the port labeled green here. You want to take the connector and line up a small arrow on this side. That should be facing the arrow on the box here. Be careful to just push it down and it should click. Don't push hard. If it won't go in, then you may need to turn it around. Don't force it if you can't get it in, because you don't want to break it. Once you've got this one connected, um, and once you've done the other electrodes on the head, you can connect both of the electrode sets in this way. So we're ready to do the final step of the cap, connect the electrodes to the amplifier, fill them with gel, and check the impedances to make sure we have a good connection between the scalp and the electrodes. The first thing we need to do is connect the various bits of the cap to the head box, which will take the signals into the amplifier. Remember those two uh, odd colored electrodes, the black and the blue one that we had from the beginning? They will have special connectors that need to go into the head box looking like this. Um, there should also be a label on the connectors to tell you which one's which, which one's the reference and which one's the ground. They're going to plug into labeled ports on the head box. You'll see that the reference one, which has five pins in it, should connect right into here. You should just push, push it down, that should snap like that on the reference one. The other one's the ground. It only has four pins in it. And you should be able to line it up with a slot and push and it should connect like that. Once those are connected, you have your two sets of electrodes. Let's connect set one first, which was the ones that plugged into the green ports. We have a connector that looks something like this. It will fit into the port here that's labeled green. So we'll just take this, we'll choose the side with the arrow on it, and that should line up with the side that has the arrow on the connector box. You line it up and you push it down until it snaps. These little levers on the side will come out and it will connect. You shouldn't be able to pull it out at this point. It should be fully down in and connected and not able to be removed unless you push in on the sides and then pull it out. If it's not fully connected, you won't be able to see the brain signals coming through. So it should go down and snap. If you're pushing and it won't go in, 
don't force it. Ask someone for help to make sure that you're connecting it correctly. Okay, so now that we've connected the parts to the head box, we're ready to do the impedance adjustment. To do this, we need to turn on the power on the head box. There's a power button labeled right here. Push that, you'll get a beep, and the green light should come on to indicate it's on. If there's a notification that there's a low battery, at this point you probably want to change it, and you can talk to the tech team to make sure you do that before you begin recording. Now what we need to do is we need to go into impedance mode so that we can start to uh, adjust each electrode's impedance individually and make sure that they are appropriate for recording. To do this, you press the Z key on the head box. When you do this, a light should come on on the head box and you should also get red lights at all of the electrodes on the head, just like this. Now what I'm ready to do is I'm ready to start putting some gel in. So I'm gonna get those syringes I prepared before the experiment began I'm going to start putting gel into each electrode. I'm going to start critically with the blue and the black ones first. These are the referencing ground electrodes. So let's put it in the black one first. Now to do this, I'm careful not to get the needle close to someone's eye. I don't want to take someone's eye out. I can see the little gap in the little hole here where I can put the needle down in. Don't jam it in. You don't want to puncture the persistent skin. Again, it's a blunt needle, but you don't want to hurt them. Push the needle down in and squirt just a little bit of gel. You have to get used to how much gel you need to push, push in. I'm just going to put a little bit of gel here. And I'm going to wiggle the end of this back and forth, okay? just like this, along the axis of the hole. Now, I shouldn't have gel seeping out everywhere. It's good to have a paper towel at this point so that you can wipe your hands off. It does get a bit messy sometimes. I'm going to do the same thing in the blue hole. Squirt a bit of gel in it and wiggle this back and forth. At this point, what you should notice is that both of those electrodes should turn green, the lights on them. Once that happens, you can be pretty happy that those electrodes are settled, and that's all you need to do with those electrodes for now. That means that their impedance is good. Once you're happy that those are green, then you'll need to start doing each of the other electrodes individually. So I'm going to do number green, the uh, number five green electrode here, which is right between them. I'm going to put the needle down in, push a little bit of gel out, and wiggle back and forth along the axis of the hole. Okay. It turned green already. So that means that electrode is pretty much ready to go. And I shouldn't need to touch it again. You're going to do this with all of the electrodes. Occasionally you've got some that are more fiddly than others, especially down here on the sides, in the back, or anywhere that the cap is loose. In that case, you may need to put uh, a little bit more gel or wiggle your um, uh, needle around a little bit. Again, you're not trying to scratch the participant's head too hard. You're just trying to push a hair, push aside hair um, and make sure that the gel is making contact with the skin. There's an alternative way to connect electrodes. You should talk to your supervisor about which way you should be doing. In this alternative method, we look into the gaps. We don't put the electrodes in first, and we look into the gaps and we see that we can see the participant's hair. The first thing you do is you use the tip of the blunt needle to push aside the participant's hair until you can see their scalp. Be careful not to scratch them too hard, but you will need to push a little bit to push the hair aside. I think I can now see your scalp. Once you can see the scalp, you should insert a bit of gel at the bottom. Be careful not to put too much gel. You should not be putting enough gel that it comes to the top of the electrode slot. Just enough to cover the bottom and to touch the scalp. Once you've done that, you can insert the electrode. Again, remembering to push it the whole way down. And notice now it's green, so that electrode has a good connection. If it didn't have a good connection at this point, you may need to insert the needle in here and wiggle around a little bit, or perhaps add more gel. Try the wiggle method first, and only add more gel if that doesn't work. What we need to do now is we need to attach electrodes to the face to record what's called the electrooculogram. This is, these are electrical signals from the eyes that uh, 
react when people move their eyes around or blink. You'll notice that there are a few electrodes from one of the sets which don't have a place on the cap. In this particular set, it's number 14 and number 9 from uh, the second set, but you'll need to check your system to identify exactly which ones are for this purpose. You'll notice that these electrodes already have rubber rings attached to them here at the end. This is because we're going to attach stickers to them and put them on the face. So they need these rubber rings in order to be able to stick to the face. I've got some uh, extra bits here that I need in order to make this work. I've got some adhesive rings, which I'm going to use to attach these to the face. I've also got some alcohol prep pads, which I'm going to use to prepare the face to receive the electrodes. So let's start with cleaning the face off. We need to do this because some participants will come in with um, a lot more oily skin on the face or they may have makeup on on the face and we need to make clear spaces, um, clear skin spaces where we can attach the electrodes. So I'm just going to warn the participant that I'm going to rub sort of under their eye on their cheek here for the location of one of these and to the side of their eye over here for the other one. Now, I've ch I'm choosing two locations here, um, which I'm going to call the horizontal eye channel and the vertical eye channel. But you should check with your supervisor which electrode locations they want for the EOG. The adhesive, adhesive rings, you simply peel them off um, of the sticker sheet. The side that is free is sticky, and I'm going to align that such that the electrode uh, hole, the electrode port, sticks to the hole in the adhesive ring. So I, I can see the electrode metal surface here, and there's a little area for gel within that. I'm going to grab the blue tab and pull back the white uh, side, uh, sticky uh, side off of this so that now the other side is also sticky. And this can be used to attach to the face. So I'm going to go to my horizontal eye position here, right to the side of the eye, aligned with it. I'm going to stick this onto the face at that point. Okay. I make sure it's attached well. And at this point, I can use my syringe, as I normally would, to insert a bit of gel into that and I should get it to turn green. Again, try not to overload it with gel. It's turned green, so that means the connection should be good. Okay. It's really important that when you're using the blunt needle on the face, as well as on these frontal electrode channels, where there is a lot more skin than hair, that you don't scratch the participant too hard. We don't want to leave them with marks coming out of the EEG experiment. So this is the horizontal eye channel. It's going to record our horizontal eye movements uh, back and forth. I said I'm also going to use a vertical eye channel, which will be here below the eye. This will record things like blinks and vertical movements of the eyes up and down. Again, I'm going to take my electrode, I'm going to put the sticky ring on it such that the uh, electrode comes through the hole. Grab the blue tab and peel off the white cover so that the other side the sticky is released. And I'll put this right below her eye to the side of her nose. I'll insert a bit of gel. I may need to push this so that it's fully in, and then I'll adjust just like I do any other electrode until it's green. During the experiment, participants can move their faces in ways that will disrupt the recording of the EEG data. It's important to be able to identify these artifacts from the data so that you can tell them not to do it. For instance, one thing that participants sometimes do is that they will wrinkle their forehead up and down as they're thinking about the experiment or realizing something new during the experiment that they didn't notice before. This can cause artifacts in the EEG because of the muscles in the forehead moving. Some participants will also sometimes chew their, or move their jaw um, back and forth. This can happen if they're chewing gum during the experiment. Obviously, you should ask them to take out the gum beforehand, but sometimes you don't notice. You'll notice once they start doing the experiment that this is the case. 
Participants will sometimes also move their head back and forth um, or move it around. Again, participants should try not to do this. They should try to keep their head nice and still, looking forward at the screen with all of their facial muscles relaxed. Sometimes participants will also blink quite a bit. Now, blinking is normal. You can't avoid it completely, but it's important to notice which artifacts are associated with blinks. All right, so we finished the EEG experiment. So now it's time to dismantle everything before we clean up. Again, we should be really careful to make sure we don't break anything. The participants shouldn't get up right away because they are still connected to a lot of equipment. So ask the participant to stay seated and start to disconnect them from the amplifiers. The first thing you do is turn off the head box, um, which is this box here, by pressing the power button. You may need to hold it down for a second or so so that it turns off. Once you've done this, you can start disconnecting uh, the cables that attach to the electrodes on the head. You can disconnect the one from the yellow port and disconnect the one from the green port. To do this, you simply push on the little levers on the side and then it should slide out just like this. You will also want to pull out the ground electrode. These can feel like they're sticking a little bit, but they pop out and the reference electrode. Once you've collected all of these, I usually give them to the participant and ask them to hold on to their wires. Remember, you've also clipped the electrodes to the back of them, so you may want to detach those clips. And you'll want to ask the participant to unhook uh, their connection to the chest strap, or you can just undo the chin strap underneath them, their chin, depending on which way you've set it up. Once you've done this, you can remove the electrodes from the face by simply grabbing the blue tab and peeling back, being gentle. Those are done. And at this point, you can just take the whole cap off in one big swoop. Now be careful because hair can get tangled up in it and you don't want to pull the subject's hair out with it. Once you gather up all the wires, you can put the cap aside and we'll talk about how to clean that up later. How are you doing? Okay, thank okay. you. Participants are a bit of a mess, so you're going to have to help them uh, clean themselves up. Um, you may want to take the chest strap off as well. And you can offer them some water and a biscuit if you're nice. Thank you very much. It's important that you know which type of EEG system you'll be recording with, as we have two major types here at Kent. The one I'm holding right now is what's called a passive electrode setup. Uh, basically, each electrode is embedded in the cap, and it's a simple metal ring with wires that go down to a head box to connect the signals into the amplifier. This is called, again, the passive setup because there's no real power or active uh, nature system going into uh, the electrodes. This is in contrast to the ACTICAP system, which is what many people use. The ACTICAP system actually has a little circuit board that you can see through uh, the, the surface of the electrode, and there are lights inside. They're actively powered um, and do not require as much abrasion of the scalp in order to make a good connection and receive good quality signals. You should talk to your supervisor before you begin to determine which system you're going to be using. So now I'm going to show you how to set up the passive electrodes if those are the ones you're going to be using for your experiment. Again, there are a variety of different cap sizes. Typically, they look something like this, where they'll have most of the electrodes embedded uh, into the cap with many, many wires coming out of them, and all of the wires will go into one of the head boxes. There's some different versions of the head box, but most of the head boxes for the passive electrodes look like this. There'll be a single port for each channel, and the electrode will plug into each channel, in, into the port for each channel. It's important that the right electrode goes into the right port, otherwise your channels will be mixed up in your recording. With this, we don't need to put each electrode into the port because they're already embedded into the cap in the correct locations. So we can simply put the cap on our participant just like this. So our participant Lisa here is going to turn a little bit this way, and I'm going to attach the cap much like I did before, uh, with ActiCap. I'm going to put this down on the front of her forehead. Can you hold that down for me? 
and then I'm going to pull the cap back over. Now again, I've pre-measured uh, the cap to make sure that this is the right size cap that I've selected for her. Be careful that once she's connected up to the wires, the participant doesn't pull the equipment onto the floor. So make sure you're close enough to the table. At this point, I will measure just like I did before to get everything in the right place. So you will always need to measure to get the cap in the appropriate location. From Nasian to Inyan, 35 uh, centimeters. That means I want my CZ electrode to be right in the center of that. From Nasian to Inyan, um, it is not right now. So I'm gonna pull it forward a bit or back a bit, adjust it so that I get into the right location. I think that looks okay. And I'll check this orientation as well. Again, I want to measure from one tragus to the other. It's about 34 centimeters. And I want the blue reference electrode to be in the middle between those two, which should be about 17 centimeters. That looks about right. So I may want to walk around the front, make sure that things look pretty symmetric. I'm pretty happy with that at this point. At this point, I ask the participant to fasten, or I can fasten, the chin strap under the chin. And if I feel like the cap has moved at this point, I may want to uh, move it again and measure again. Again, to make sure the cap fits correctly, I'll, I'll need to make sure that there are no bumps or the, the cap is not sticking out. If it is, maybe the cap's too big and I need to choose a smaller size to make it fit tightly to the head. Once the cap's in place and I've secured the chin strap, um, I need to start filling the uh, electrodes with gel. Now it's important that you verify the type of gel that you need for this cap. Passive electrodes use a different type of gel than the active cap electrodes. You will find the correct gel for passive electrodes to have a white cap and it will look like it's gray inside rather than green. You fill up a syringe with the gel just like you would have done before and then you squirt gel into first the reference electrode, which here is labeled as blue, and the ground electrode, which is here labeled as black, just like in the ActiCap system. Once you've filled them with a little bit of gel, it's useful to take a wooden stick, use the wooden end of it, and put it down into the gel and twist it around. What you're doing here is you're trying to make a good contact between the electrode and the scalp. You're pushing hair aside and you're also abrading the scalp a bit. That is, you're scratching away some of the dead skin cells to make sure that you have a good connection of the gel with the skin. Active electrodes don't need as much abrading and that's the benefit of using them. As you saw when we did the active cap, the process was much quicker. So here you may need to fiddle around a bit, adding more gel, abrading, scratching a little bit, and twisting the um, uh, wooden stick. There'll be indication on the screen in the impedance checking in the software um, to tell you how well you're doing. I can do this one as well. Once you're happy with the impedances for the ground and the reference electrodes, then you can start doing all of the other electrodes in the same fashion. Try to do them systematically, and it's often good to have a buddy to help you with this to speed it up if you're working in a pair. You need to have all of the impedances below the target uh, uh, level in order to proceed. Otherwise, that channel, if you have any channels where you cannot get the impedance below it, you may not have such good signal on that channel. All right, so we finished the experiment, and now it's time to clean up. So we've got, got the cap here from the participant, and what we need to do first is we need to remove all of the electrodes from their ports one by one. It's important that you're careful when you do this so that you don't damage the electrodes. What you need to do is take each electrode and grab it by its body. Do not grab it by the wire because you may pull the wire out of the electrode. Grab it by its body and also hold on to the rubber ring on the cap and then simply pull the electrode out. You can do these one by one. It'll take a little while, but you can listen to some music or something. If you're lucky enough to have a tool, you can use it to remove the electrodes. It makes it much easier. What you do is you take the end of the tool and you put it up against the end of the electrode without the wire. You push inwards and lift up and it comes straight out. 
This is a really effective way of removing the electrodes from the cap. So now that we've got all the electrodes out of the cap, it's time to clean them up. So I lay out the electrodes like this on the table. Um, it's really important that these black boxes are kept completely dry. The best way to do this is to wrap them up in a towel and keep them far away from the sink. So I'm going to wash one of these sets of electrodes at a time. I'm going to wrap that part up in the towel. Um, and th this part, the actual electrodes over here, I can take towards the sink and wash them. So now that I've got the little black box protected and uh, with the towel and away from the water behind me, I'm able to bring the sets of electrodes and wash them. It's useful to separate the electrodes into their individual little bunches before you begin, because you don't want to wash electrodes by accident over and over again. So once you wash a set, you can put it down into the sink to indicate that you're done with it. Let's start with this set here. It's usually good to wash them off in the basin of water that you have prepared. And then you may want to use a soft toothbrush to kind of rub over the surface of the electrode. Don't scrub it too hard. You don't want to scrub away the electrode surface, the little metal part here. Um, but you do want to get it clean. And you especially want to get the gel out of the little groove where you stuck the um, uh, needle before when you filled it up with gel. It's important that you clean them very, very carefully because the next person doing the experiment wants to come in and find a nice clean set of electrodes. Once you're convinced that you've got all the gel out of all four of those, then you can move on to the next set of four and go through and scrub the gel out of those. Again, we're trying not to scrub the metal bit too hard, but we're trying to make sure we get all the gel off of it especially out of that little groove. Those look pretty good. And then we just continue doing this for all the electrodes in that set, and then again for the other set. Now we need to wash the cap that was on the participant's head. There's lots of gel stuck in these little uh, holes or ports where the electrodes were, and we need to make sure we get all of that out so that the next person that comes in to use the cap finds it nice and clean. The best thing to do is, at first, put it in a tub of water that we've prepared ahead of time. It should be sort of lukewarm water. And we put it down there, and you can let it soak for a little bit. After it's soaked for a little bit, maybe just a few minutes, use your trusty toothbrush again and try to go through each hole and get all of the gel out. If you don't get the gel out, it's going to be stuck in there for the next time, the next participant, and the next, next experimenter. You don't want to be the person that leaves behind a mess for the next person. It's not nice. So it's probably important that you go through this in a pretty systematic fashion. You can set up your own way of doing it. Maybe you do all the greens first, you do them in order. Maybe you do all the yellows first, you do them in order. It's up to you. But I recommend making a system. Otherwise, you're going to start redoing the same ones over and over again. We're a community of researchers, and we need to clean up after ourselves so that the next person coming in has a nice, clean lab to work with. You, you'll use a lot of things during your experiment, including towels that the participant will use to wash their hair and dry their hair. If you notice that there's a buildup of dirty towels, we have a washing machine that you can use to wash them. Please put a load in so that the next person coming in has a set of nice clean towels. Also, just generally tidy up around the kitchen and the lab after you're finished. Tidy up after yourself, but if you notice a mess left by someone else, clean it up because the next person coming in will appreciate it. It's the way a good group of researchers treats each other. In the kitchen, you can clean up the equipment that you use, but this is also where the participant will wash their hair. There's a salon style, style sink over here that you can use for the participant to wash their hair. This comes out and it has hot and cold running water and the participant can lean over it. Um, there's plenty of shampoo for them to use to wash their hair. I usually let them to do it themselves because most people prefer to wash their own hair. Afterwards, there are a bunch of towels up here and there's a hair dryer and there's some other things like combs and extra shampoo over here. So most of what you need should be within the cabinets here to help the participant clean themselves up. This is the first thing to do. You want to get them out so that you can focus on the cleanup of the equipment.